Mr. Speaker, with respect to the time agreement or the discussion about who's controlling the time, I would rise in true opposition to claim time. Is the gentleman from Washington opposed to the conference report? No, I am not. So uh, the gentleman from Alabama, Mr. Rogers, and the gentleman from Texas, uh, Mr. Roy, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes Mr. Uh, uh, the gentleman from Alabama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent to yield to the gentleman from Washington, Mr. W uh, w Smith, one half of my time, and that he be allowed to control that time. Without objection. Uh, Ms. Ms. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and insert extraneous material on the conference report to accompany H.R. 2670 that I uh, may include tabular material on the same. Without objection. Uh, I yield myself such so time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Ms. Speaker, I rise in strong support of FY24 National Defense Authorization Act. The NDA is one of the most consequential bills Congress considers. Passage of this bill each year sends an important signal to the men and women defending our freedom that Congress can function and will prioritize their needs above all else. Enacting the NDA has never been more vital than today. America and our allies face unprecedented and rapidly evolving threats from China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and terrorist organizations throughout the world. These threats are real. We all just witnessed terrorist acts on the, their threats against one of our closest allies in the Middle East. And we all pray for Israel as it counters the most vile attack on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. To stay ahead of these threats, DOD came to Congress this year, as they do every year, to request critical new authorities as a part of the National Defense Authorization Act. We took those requests seriously. We held dozens of hearings to examine them. Then we worked to improve them and add our own priorities uh, through the committee and floor processes. We followed regular order and had a conference committee for the first time in two years. We fought the Senate for weeks over each other's priorities, and we came to a compromise. That's what's before us today. I'll be the first to admit I'm disappointed we didn't get all the priorities we wanted. But you know what? The Senate is pretty disappointed they didn't get the priorities they wanted either. It takes compromise to move legislation in a divided government, and this bill is a good compromise it's laser focused on deterring our adversaries, especially China. The conference report includes critical new authorities to ensure our war fighters have what they need to deter our adversaries and prevail in future battles. It goes a long way toward ending woke policies being forced on our service members by left wing bureaucrats. It includes provisions that ban critical race theory and require promotions based on merit. It includes several provisions that require accountability from the administration, like a special inspector general for Ukraine, uh, Ukraine aid, and a, de a deadline for the DOD to finally pass an audit. It improves the security of Israel by extending weapons transfers and expanding joint military training. And finally, the conference report carries important new quality of life improvements for our service members and their military families, including the largest pay raise in over 20 years. Mr. Speaker, this bill is a compromise, but it's a good compromise. It puts the need of our service members and our national security before all else. I urge members to support, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman